Hi everyone. In today's Autodesk Smoke video, we're going to be having a look at conforming and rebuilding timelines that come from an Avid Media Composer. Now, before we get started in Smoke, we're going to have a look at the Avid Media Composer and the various settings which need to be set up in order to conform successfully in Smoke. Let's start off at the very beginning. When creating a project in the Avid Media Composer, you need to take note of the formatting you are working with. If you're using the same media between Avid Media Composer and Autodesk Smoke, the project settings need to match for a very easy conform. If you're using a standard definition resolution for the offline in Avid Media Composer and a high definition resolution in Autodesk Smoke, this is not a problem as you can make Smoke reformat the resolution when doing the online conform. For the purposes of this example, I will be creating a full HD project at 23976. Remember this configuration as you will use the exact same values when setting up the Smoke project. In Avid Media Composer, there are two ways in which it handles media. Firstly, you can choose to transcode all your footage to DNX HD and do your editing. Alternatively, you can choose to work with native media formats and link them through the Avid Media Access or AMA architecture. Whichever way you choose, you will still be able to conform the timeline in Smoke, but you will need to ensure that you set the AAF export up correctly so that the media relinks in Autodesk Smoke. The timeline currently displayed is using native ProRes media through the AMA architecture. In my Avid bin, I have called this Native AMA Edit. This timeline will always point to the native media. There is a second timeline called Transcoded DNX HD Edit. If I open this timeline, the edit is identical to the first, but the material you are looking at is Avid DNX HD. Depending what your facility's workflow is, it's up to you to choose which method to use. To export the transcoded DNX HD edit timeline, you would select it in the bin, right click, and choose the export option. In the export pop up window, you have a few export settings to choose from. And in this case, I'm going to link my video and audio media. In the options menu, you can change the export method. Link to simply points the AAF to the files. Copy all media allows you to pull all the media to a single location if the files have been scattered everywhere on the network. Consolidate media will perform consolidation on export, which gives you shorter video clips. Video mix down is not an option you want to use as you don't want to flatten the edit. Keep the option set on link to and double check it is the same under the audio details. Finally, don't include any rendered audio effects. And on the video side, don't include any rendered video effects. You can click save to return to the export window. For sanity's sake, it's a good idea to navigate close to the media files directory and place the AAF file at this level. The reason is that when Smoke conforms a timeline, it will search down through the directories depending on its location. You can click Save and the AAF will be exported. Let's do this with the native AMA edit as well. I will select the sequence in the bin and choose the export option once again through the right click menu. For the export settings, Click on Options to enter into the Settings menu. Ensure that the video and audio details are also set to Link 2. Once again, all rendered effects should not be enabled for video or for audio. Finally, enable AAF Edit Protocol. This option allows the AAF to recognize formats other than DNX HD. If you do not check this option, then Avid Media Composer will not allow you to export an AAF using the AMA architecture. Click Save to return to the export menu. As before, I'm going to save this AAF at the top level above the media files so that the source clips can easily be found. So both methods will produce an AAF which can be imported into Smoke. The first AAF, which is the AMA Native Edit, can link only to the QuickTime Media. The second AAF, which is the transcoded DNX HD edit, can link to the DNX HD media, but you could also point it to the original QuickTime sources as well. 
Now let's go into Smoke and see how we can go ahead and conform the AAFs with their associated media. Remember what I said earlier, when creating projects in Smoke, it's always a good idea to match the project's resolutions if possible. So this project will be full 1080 HD running at 23976 frames per second at 10 bit, which matches the Avid Media Composer project. Starting in Smoke, you are always brought to the creative desktop level. However, all your media management tasks are performed at a database level or what we like to call the clip library. To enter into the clip library, you will see a blue button to the left of the interface labeled Default Clip Library. You can have multiple clip libraries per project if you wish by clicking on the New button. To go into the clip library, simply click the Open button. So here we have an empty clip library or bin if you wish to call it that and this is where we do the conform. Firstly, we need to browse to the AAF and its media on the drives. Smoke has its own built-in equivalent of the Apple Finder which is called the Gateway. We will split the screen in half by enabling the dual view split at the top left of the interface. This means you can browse the network as well as the database at the same time. Using the blue pop-up button, you can open the menu and choose the forward slash volumes folder on your Mac. This is the location where all the drives are shown on your system. Now if you simply expand the entries, you can get to the AAF and its media files. Expanding the ProRes folder reveals the QuickTime media and the MXF folder reveals the DNxHD transcoded media. You don't have to have this media exposed all the time, so you can close these folders by clicking on the triangle to the left of the folder. Now let's start off with the native AMA edit. Double click on the AAF to select it and bring up the AAF settings at the bottom of the interface. For a bit of extra information, you can always swipe to the right hand side of the interface and this brings up the preview window. This will show all the various detail embedded inside the AAF file. You can also swipe to the right again to hide the preview window which might give you a bit more space to work with. The metadata options located at the bottom of the interface will give you options to change the timeline's name when conformed but it also allows you to change the timeline's resolution. This is very useful if you've offline at standard definition and you're going to conform a high definition timeline using high definition sources which match the original standard def at the offline stage. In this case, the clip resolution is consistent between the Avid Media Composer and Autodesk Smoke, so I will simply choose to choose the resolution from the file. Under the Media Options, we set the search criteria for the media that the timeline will eventually link to. Because this AAF was linked to the original media through the Avid AMA architecture, we can tell Smoke to search for the media based on its original file name. To conform the timeline, Drag and drop the AAF file from the Gateway window into the Clip Library and Autodesk Smoke will do the rest. And that is it. Really, really simple. I can now select the clip in the Clip Library and load it to the desktop. Expanding the timeline shows that the edit is the same and the metadata is pointing to QuickTime Media. For more detail on the media, click the Alt button on the keyboard and hover over the clip and this will reveal the metadata as well as the file and its file path. I'll collapse the timeline and delete it from the desktop. Going back into the clip library, we have the transcoded DNxHD edit AAF to conform as well. All the settings I showed you earlier apply except for one slight difference. Double clicking on the AAF brings up the AAF conforming options again and under the Media Options menu, you now have two choices for your conform. To conform the timeline using the Avid DNx HD Media, you need to turn off Use File Name and choose Use UMID, which is specific to Avid AAF Conforms and DNx HD Media. When you drag and drop the AAF from the Gateway window back into the Clip Library, it will build the timeline again, but using the transcoded Avid DNx HD Media. Loading this clip from the library into the desktop and by expanding it, it will show that the link is to the DNxHD media files. Finally, for the last time, I'll collapse and delete this clip and go back into the clip library. 
I'll select the same AAF in the gateway window which was conformed, but this time we will choose to conform it using the original QuickTime ProRes media instead. This is a simple case of changing settings. Turn off Use UMID and turn on Use File Name. Once again, I'll drag and drop the AAF from the Gateway Browser into the Clip Library. The clip assembles itself and I can select this clip one more time and load it back to the Smoke Desktop. When expanding this clip by double-clicking on it, this reveals that it has now connected itself to the original ProRes QuickTime Media. The conform is now complete and you can begin onlining and finishing your production in Autodesk Smoke. Please remember to check the documentation or wiki database to see what is supported when conforming an Avid AAF in Autodesk Smoke. Now there's also some more advanced tools to dealing with more challenging conforms and if you need any help, please feel free to ask on the Autodesk area forums. I hope that you found this video informative and enjoyable and thanks for watching.